Take a deep breath, Jacopo, and listen to me. What the fuck? <laughs> Hello, and welcome once again to the house in Fata Morgana. I am Ashmanix, <clears throat> and it has been a while. Um, trying to remember what happened in the last part of this playthrough. I believe we were uh, watching another story, a new story, of the white-haired girl married to a 19th century investor, if I remember correctly, and he was kind of crap to her. And if I remember correctly, she was going to... She wanted... She was feeling pretty down, so the maid was... Um, the maid wanted to cheer up, so they went to one of the rooms in the house and just had a little dance. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the husband came back and assumed that she, the white-haired girl was going to go out into the night and, uh, I don't know, dance with other men or something. It was a pretty big uh, assumption, considering she was just enjoying herself with the maid. So that didn't end well, and she got, like, banished. Ah, now I remember. She got banished to, like, he built an outhouse. He built a separate building in the garden where the roses were. He destroyed all the roses in the rose garden and built a separate um, building to imprison her in. Oh, the guy's a fucking... Uh, anyway. It's not looking good for the girl with the white hair. Never seems to look good for the girl with the white hair. And you're always looking smug, maid. Hmm. But anyway, let's, uh, most recent, let's jump back. Caught in a quagmire. Yes. <clears throat> My voice is terrible. Let me just take a little swig of me water. Ah. Switch to no avatars and let's just get into this. Let's load it. Yes. Yes, it looks like African, uh, some sort of bothy or outhouse that you'd get in school. That wouldn't be out of place in Scotland. Yeah, you're not looking too good. I mean, uh <clears throat> And I can't remember what voices I did for these people. I remember the white-haired girls. It's just my standard girl voice. Can't remember everyone else, though. <clears throat> How? How did things end up this way? Why? All I wanted was to go back to the way things used to be. For us to be able to smile around each other. Oof. It had been several days since Jacopo had locked her in the shed, and her day-to-day -day life was only growing more juice. A shed. A glorified shed. This guy's a <clears throat> piece of work. She was under constant surveillance. The door was only unlocked to deliver her meals three times a day. And despite what an unfortunate situation their employer's wife found herself in, the maids chattered and gossiped and giggled freely. Not even in the shadows, out of her presence. The tactless young maidservants whispered directly to the white-haired girl when they brought her meals. Look at you, madam, caged away like cattle. I could almost hear the sound of cracks forming in her heart. I imagined she had gotten to the point where she was having difficulty merely holding herself together. Oh, <clears throat> I forget the, uh, the maid is the narrator in this, isn't she? She had done nothing wrong, and yet she was forced to live this life of insults and mockery, of ridicule. The only reason her tenuously held together spirit did not completely shatter was because she still had her one and only ally. The maid Maria volunteered to attend to the white-haired girl. Maria took over the duty of delivering her three meals, meaning the other maids stopped coming by. And that relieved the white-haired girl's mental and emotional stress considerably. Maria became her sole conversation partner, her sole companion. She did not leave as soon as meals were finished, instead remaining in the shed with the white-haired girl for some time. So, uh, madam, how about a funny story? <laughs> I flubbed up pretty hard the other day. You want to hear about that? So a couple of days back, I didn't get enough sleep the previous night, right? I'm helping out in the kitchen, half awake, plating up some food. And when I go to bring it to the guest, my heart 
about leaps out of my mouth. Guess why? What I thought was a plate was actually an ashtray. Man, I'm sweating like pig. I was sweating like a pig. The guests didn't seem to notice, but the other maids were pale as ghosts the entire time. Just about everyone had every had themselves a case of the vapours. The vapours? I got quite the tongue lashing at cleanup. Pretty funny, huh? Oh, did you? Sounds like it was a pretty bad day. Y yeah. Hey, uh, madam. <clears throat> I know there's not much point in telling you to do it right now. But I'm sure he won't keep you locked up forever. He's just a bit crabby for now. It'll be alright. Although, I guess this is a bit drastic for a temper tantrum. I mean, come on. Temper tantrum, this is not. I'm sorry, madam. If only I had pushed him a bit harder. If only I had a little more influence. You might not be in this situation. I thought I could be of some help, but I guess I'm not doing a great job of that. Of course not, Marianne. You absolutely are. Just your being here takes a great weight off my shoulders. Still, though, I feel so worthless. Because I'm just a maid, I can't set you free. It's okay. I am used to being imprisoned. Oof. What? What do you mean by you used to it? He never locked your door before. Ah. You're right. I'm not sure why, but I feel as though I've been in a similar predicament before, lacking freedom and contact with others for a long stretch of time. I'm sure it's simply the exhaustion getting to you, madam. No one should ever be used to living like this. Yes, I agree. And I pray things go back to the way they were soon. Has getting mad at him never crossed your mind? Getting mad? Yeah, you know, when he yells, you yell back. Let him know he's in the wrong. Never consider doing that? I... I guess you're not one to get angry, madam. Which would mean you're a better fit for the Holy Mother than me. Oh, no. I... I do. I do sometimes want to get angry. To tell you the truth, it's almost always going through my mind how, if I did raise my voice, perhaps he would listen to what I have to say. But when I'm standing there in front of him, and he starts shouting at me, I freeze up and end up not saying a word. I'm just such a pitiful woman. Everything about me. When I need to speak up most, to stand up for myself, I cannot. Oh, don't look so down. That's not a bad thing. It's just got you in a little bit of a pickle right now. But I'll be clear <clears throat> but I'll clear everything up with you. You hear me? In my mind your modesty is a virtue. And the more I think about it, I can't even imagine you screaming. I like you better the way you are, reserved and ladylike. You can leave all the yelling to me. I'll do whatever I can help can to help you, madam. Were you able to clear up his confusion about the night we were dancing? Oh, uh, about that. Sorry, he just wouldn't hear it. I... I see. But I'm not throwing in the towel. I'll keep trying as long as it takes. So... Say, Maria, could I perhaps ask another favour? Huh? Yeah, sure. Let me have it. I would like to write him a letter. A letter? To someone who lives in the same house? Yes. As things stand, I cannot simply go visit him on a whim. And... I feel as though I could calmly express on paper things I am unable to say to him face to face. I suspect I may have more luck that way. I also believe he would be more likely to maintain his composure reading my thoughts in a letter than hearing them from my mouth. With it, I can clear up all the confusion and things can go back to the way they were. A letter, ha! Huh? Interesting. I'll write the letter 
which I would like you to deliver to him. May I ask that of you? Absolutely, not a problem. Thank you, Maria. You are the only person I can count on, and I mean that. How did this happen? Why would she betray me? I wanted to give her a decently happy life. I didn't want to get violent with her. Yet, when I saw her face, when I heard what she had, sit had to say, I couldn't restrain myself. I guess what it comes down to is that, no matter how you dress it up, I am still a bear zati. <clears throat> there was never any way for this bloodline to give that girl happiness. God damn it. Why am I fretting over this nonsense? And I'm supposed to be the future head? Ha! An illusion. But they're dancing. They really are. And they look like they're having a wonderful time. Are you sure it's an illusion and not something else? To me, it does not seem to be. I cannot see it as anything but two tiny people dancing. That's how it works. Reach out your hand and try to grab them. You won't be able to. Ah, you're right. That's a shame. I didn't think you actually would. But it's the most precious thing. <laughs> they look as though they're dancing atop my palm. It's almost frightening how much innocence rests within those hands. <clears throat> it's as if they've been completely cut off from the world's filth. My hands, however, are soaked in blood. I fear that bringing her into my world may taint her. Am I capable of protecting this woman's purity? Wait, weren't you accusing her of being impure? Of wanting to elope and... I don't know. Allegedly, potentially cheat on you. And yet, as I watched her so joyously playing, I felt as though I had gotten close to her. I was the one being a child that day. Jacopo, it's me, Maria. Is it alright if I come in? Ah, uh, ah, uh, Maria. It's fine. Come in. Alrighty. Colour me surprised. I didn't think you'd let me in. Have I ever denied you access to my room? Nope. Oh, <laughs> but you've been looking pretty glum lately. I've never exactly been a cheery man. <laughs> True enough. I know you told me before not to talk about your wife, but I'm going to stick my nose where it doesn't belong today. There's been a lot of chatter amongst the maids lately about you getting rough with her. I mean, you've got the poor thing locked up in a shed outside. You're not leaving the best impression on anyone. You here to box my ears? I don't know, 50-50. The other half is, I'm concerned about you. I know you're not the kind of man to threaten someone without a good reason. You're not. I thought you're friends with her. I am. And it hurts seeing her in so much pain. Then why has that not changed the way you act around me? I would think you'd be scorning me with the rest of the maids. Oh, I see how it is. You don't trust me. And we've known each other for so long. This isn't a question of whose side I'm on. You're in pain too. I can see that. You've always bottled things up. Kept them hidden. You're too proud to rely on others. But you should probably vent to someone before it reaches the point where you no longer can. Say, Jacopo, do you remember the promise we made a while back? How far back? Back when we were still shorter than me. You were 14 and I was 12. Wow. I had to leave town and you came to see me off. Quite frankly, I didn't think you'd come. I was surprised even if I didn't show it. Oh, are we going to flash back? Oh yeah, I guess we are. Jacopo. <clears throat> Where's your dad? Or are you here alone? He... Didn't even tell me. Ah. 
there's no reason you have to leave town. My old man says the Campanellas have more power. I should be the one leaving. It's not that simple. Grown-ups have a lot to consider. So don't give me that look, Jacopo. We were kids, but we both kind of started to catch on to the situation with our families and to the bonds that land held on us. Although we didn't know any of the details at the time, my grandpa owned all the land the site was built on, but he was a very conservative man. Wait, your grandfather owned all the land the site was built on? How did you end up being the maid? What is going on here? <clears throat> he didn't try to spread his influence, instead opting to fortify what he already had. I don't know exactly when it first started, but organisations were used to administrate cities. And when we were kids, my dad was a Campo Familia. Familia? I think that is. Capo Familia, that's it. <clears throat> I am assuming I don't know how that's pronounced wrong. And my grandpa, his conciliere. Oh my god. I apologize. I am absolutely destroying those words. But just because he was an advisor didn't mean he was powerless. While my dad made the decisions, my grandpa was the only one allowed to fight on him on the, fight him on them. Your father was a capodicina <clears throat> that served under my dad. He wasn't especially happy about that. But parents quarreling doesn't affect their kids, or at least. That's what I thought at the time, and what you probably thought too. But there was still a chance we could be caught in the crossfire, so my dad decided to send me and my mum away. Off the island into the north were some more prosperous areas. He thought that by sending us there, we could live our li lives clean, regardless of where we came from. There's no changing what's in your blood, though. You could have told me too. Or were you planning on leaving without saying anything? No, it was just... All decided so quickly. Why do you sound so accepting? Adults have a lot to consider. You bet they do. But you could at least let them know you're opposed to it, Maria. But no, your tail went straight between your legs as soon as you were told. You just gave up and accepted it straight away. I thought you were better than that. Do you, do you think? Do you think I don't know that? But I'll just be in my dad's way if I stay. I'm a kid, a girl. I wouldn't be of any help if something happened. And I don't want to need someone to protect me. I've never once thought of you as a girl. Burn! <clears throat> hey now, that's mean. Oh jeez, thanks Jacopo. Now you're getting me all mushy too. If anyone should be sad here, it's me. I'm not sad. Oh really? You sure you're not actually torn that I won't be around anymore? You're a huge crybaby after all, Jacopino. Hey, when have I ever cried? And don't call me that. <laughs> I made you mad. Short fused as ever, I see. You've got to learn to keep your head. You're a man and heir to the Berzati family. Hmm. <laughs> don't you lecture me. Tch, so pick-headed. You could at least listen to me this once before I'm gone. Hey, Maria. Got a little time to spare. Uh, yeah, sure, but not much. The carriage is going to be here soon. Do you have enough for a trip to the hell and back? Yeah, I should have time for that. Because of our families, we weren't really able to get along with the other kids in the city, so we played a lot, atop the t a lot up at the top of that hill. It became kind of like our little secret lair. There was an abandoned house up there, I guess an old farmhouse or something, and kids love that sort of thing, you know? We called it Casa Nostra, our home, and we pretended it was actually ours. We drew circles on the wall in chalk and used it for target practice. What? We brought up a bale of straw and used it to make makeshift beds. When either of us got into fights with our parents, we'd stay the night here instead of home. Wow, did your parents not, like, get worried or whatever? In retrospect, I'm sure they knew where we were going, just let us do our thing. Oh yeah, there was this one time we were playing and a huge storm rolled in, trapping us up there. The wind wasn't just howling, it was screaming bloody murder. It wasn't blowing so hard I thought that it was blowing so hard I thought the house might fly away. As I recall, you were crying that night. Hey, Nino, you here to see me off too? Ah, there you go wagging your tail with that dumb look on your face. You have no idea what's going on, do you? It wasn't just the two of us who had made Casa Nostra our home base, though. There was one more. A stray black dog. I'm pretty sure it didn't actually have 
It didn't have actually black fur though, and it was just really, really dirty. Of course he doesn't. He's a stupid animal. Oh, don't talk about him like that. He's one of us. What were you planning to do about Nero? Just leave him behind? Hmm, nothing else I can do. Can't bring a dog in the carriage. Besides, you're here, so it'll be fine. You take care of Nero, alright? He doesn't like me. You're the only one who can take care of him. Maybe so, but I'm not coming back. He'll starve to death if you don't figure out something. He's a puny runt. I doubt he, would, he could win in a fight for scraps. Come on, do it for me. You said you won't be coming back. Did you mean that? Are you absolutely never returning to this town? There's no telling what may or may not happen, so it's best not to get your hopes up. Better than that, better that than the pain of getting let down. Well, well, I've turned into quite the cynic, huh? Maybe if I'd been born into a more normal family, I'd be in my room in a pile of dolls right now, right now, my head in the clouds. Can't imagine you doing that, nor do I think that's normal. <laughs> well said. Ah, hey, stop that, Nero. Quick, like me. Ah, that tickles, and you reek. Maria. Hmm? What is it? Come back. I don't care if you don't know when it will be. Just don't say you'll never return. Wait, this is this woman is his maid. How did this turn come, come about? No one knows. <clears throat> no one knows how things are going to end up. Maybe my old man will gain more power, or maybe yours will. If things continue as they are, I'll be your old man. Then down the lane, I'll work in service of the Campanella family, Campanella, and that's just fine by me. But even if that's not the future that lies ahead, I promise I will make a place for you. So, Maria. Question: Do you have a crush on me? Wow. What? Kidding? I'm just kidding. No need for a con if she unfit. I don't know what that is. I was just playing around. Here I am trying to have a serious conversation and then you... Listen to me. I don't have any of those. I don't have any of those. What? You know, those kinds of feelings for you. <laughs> this dude. I consider you a lifelong friend. My one and only friend. Wow. Friend zoned. That's why I came to see you off. And that's why I'm telling you this now. Whether you're a girl or a boy is irrelevant. Friendship lasts much longer than something so fanciful as romance. Am I wrong? <laughs> Don't laugh, damn it. It's humiliating. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because I agree entirely. Yeah, we've always been on the same page, Jacopo. Maybe we did fight a lot, but there wasn't one we didn't get through. No one else understood just how lonely it was, wearing a mask for all the other kids, trying to fit into their happy little circle. Couldn't afford to be found out, after all. Neither of us had any real allies. Except for each other, of course. Nope. I'm glad I got the chance to play with you. If you hadn't been there, I probably wouldn't have bothered caring for Nero either. It was too funny watching him chase you around. You're a sick girl, Maria. <laughs> so hey, Jacopo, this place will still be Casa Nostra even after I leave, right? You won't do anything to it, will you? Of course not. This is our home. That was always the plan. Right. Thanks. Though, you know, you being all nice is kind of creepy, Jacopo. It's not going to start snowing, is it? How rude. <laughs> well, if you're going to be like that. I'm not sure I want to give it to you. Huh? Give what? A present? You should have said so sooner. Gimme, gimme. You don't have a shred of tact, do you? What's it matter? Come on, what you bring? Let me have it, soldier. Oh, Maria. Consider this a temporary parting gift. You'll be wanting one of these for a while. Ooh, is that a cartridge? From a Colt Navy? No way, did you swipe it? Probably catch hell for it too. Wow, wow, this is amazing. I always wanted to get my hands on the real thing. Wait, this is a cartridge for a gun. This is from one hanging up in your house, isn't it? The one your dad was bragging about. They just started selling them this year, and it's ridiculously hard to get your hands on one, or so I hear. 
Man, guns from the new world or something else, all right, is a, is a gun, holy shit. Ah, just imagine the moments the hammer comes crashing down the back of the center chills down my spine. Are you sure... Are you sure you're a girl going crazy over a bullet cartridge? What's a big deal? I like what I like. You'll get in trouble if you don't put this back though, won't you? Don't worry. I'll return it when you return. And I won't tell anyone I gave it to you. Okay. <coughs> well, I guess I'll take you up on that then. <coughs> Jeez. Thanks, Jacopo. It'll be my treasure. This goes without saying, but don't you lose it. I'm giving it to you as a symbol of our friendship. No matter how far apart we may be, or how many times may how much time may pass, or how things play out with our families, we will always be friends. That cartridge symbolizes that promise. It's a promise, Jacopo. Our families may outwardly hate each other, but I'll always be your friend, always be on your side. And don't you <clears throat> and don't you ever go back on those words. I swear upon this glorious cartridge, this host historic land, and the names of my ancestors, I shall not make myself a liar. I trust you, Maria. We'll meet again. It may be many years from now, but that won't change a thing. Our friendship will never fade. Our friendship will never fade, and yet she's came so she comes back and she's his maid? What? Just don't understand any of this. <clears throat> God, you were adorable back then, and short to boot, but now you've hardened so much. I was flabbergasted when I next saw you, dressed all fancy from head to toe. You'd become quite the smug little bastard, I thought. You sure weren't that little kid anymore? Uh, you have quite the memory. Well, yeah, I don't forget my promises. I'd never forget I said I'd always be on your side. The question is, did you remember? I did. I remember every word you said that day. And as I said, I left Casa Nostra as it was. Though it is quite some distance away now. I imagine if we went back and did a little work on it, we could have it looking just like old times. And Nero? He, about a year after you left, he suddenly disappeared. And just for the record, I did take care of him, as you told me. I'm guessing he got in a fight with another stray or something. I searched, we could never find him. Ah, well, it has been more than a decade. Not everything's going to be exactly the same. You, however, haven't changed a bit from the girl you are all those years ago. Neither have you. Sure, you seem different on the outside, but at your core, I believe you haven't changed at all. Still the same old Jacopino? Could you not call me that? <laughs> I have changed quite a bit, unlike you, and I'm well aware of it. Say, uh, Jacopo, do you consider me supportive? Oh, well, this is weird. Of everything you could have said? <clears throat> of course you are. You're constantly supporting me, past and present. You are proof of the existence of a kind of friendship that can transcend gender, blood, and any other such distinctions. Do you know, it's honestly kind of bizarre seeing you without a stick up your ass. Wow, harsh words. Come on now, hear me out. You almost had me blushing there. Anyway, before you put that stick up back up there, tell me something. Am I still your only ally? You are. Of everyone in this mansion, am I the only one? Yes. If she would at least have a little more... The madam? I didn't actually intend to treat her like that. Believe me, Jacopo, I know. I mean, from a girl's perspective, what you did is pretty awful. But hey, I'm not a girl, according to you, anyway. I will... I will always be on your side, no matter what. God, I feel as though I'm being consoled. Hmm, that's what I was going for. I should have never opened up to you. <laughs> ah. Hey, uh, now's probably not the best time to bring this up, but... 
I have a letter. A letter? Written by the madam. Here. A letter from my wife. Let me see it. The hell am I reading? I was considering keeping it a secret, but having seen it, I thought hiding it from you might only hurt you more, so I decided it was best to show you. Who is this? <clears throat> Who is this letter for? It's as if, but that can't. Wait, what? I love you? Who is she writing to? I, I, wait, what? I don't know this man. Take a deep breath, Jacopo, and listen to me. What the fuck? What the fuck? <clears throat> the madam's having an affair. You backstabbing little shit. I can't believe it. Well, so kinda, do you know, I kind of suspected this a little bit when the maid was a little bit too frank with the, with the master. I'm like, what type of relationship is this? But then when they started talking about the past, I was like, wait a minute, but also why is she the maid? They seem like good friends. How did she end up the maid of his house? Uh, and it, to me, it's just like, I think this girl likes it, like loves him rather than just um, regards him as a friend. And th therefore, <clears throat> this beautiful wife of his is going to be a um, someone that she needs to get rid of. What is this? I haven't changed a bit. If you seriously believe that, then I've got news for you, pal. Well, who's talking? Anyone who acts exactly the same as they did in the past is doing just that, acting, much like I do around you. Is this Mario? What the fuck is this, uh, <laughs> this pose? <clears throat> Our friendship will never change. Ha! What a fucking joke. You picked the wrong girl to put your trust in, and they call you astute. Can you taste the fucking irony? Wow. Wow. What is this? Well, that just makes things easier for me. But my god, it's suffocating playing the good girl. That stupidly cheerful little ray of sunshine Maria. Ugh. Sickening. On the other hand, the payoff is fantastic. I can't stop. God, watching him lose his cool is incredible. My sides hurts just thinking about it. You're saying, you're telling me she wrote this? Who else could have written it? It's in her handwriting. Why? Why? Why must she continue betray to betray me? Has she not taken enough already? What else could she possibly want from me? I told her to stay away from my gatherings. I had the rose garden torn down. And yet still, she finds other men? I warned her. Told her it wouldn't happen again. That if she betrayed me one more time, I'd kill her. Wait, you've put her in a- you've locked her in a shed outside the house. How is she even, like... <clears throat> you're not gonna- Jack, well, you're not gonna question how she's, like, still able to communicate with people. Like, either Maria's sending the letters out or, in this, or one of the maids, but you're not gonna wonder about that if this is actually the case. Okay. Jacopo. Out of my way, Maria. I have to talk to her. Ask her what this letter's about, who this man is. And depending on how she answers... Hold it, Jacopo. Calm down. Silence. How am I supposed to stay calm right now? Listen to me. Relax. <laughs> you try to talk to her right now and you're, you aren't going to get anywhere. You're aware, ugh, you're aware of just how frenzied you are, aren't you? Besides, you think she's going to tell you the truth even if you do manage to ask? Of course not. She may look all prim and proper, but that's not the real her. Wow. I don't think she's a bad person, but... Not a bad person. The woman who wrote this letter to another man? She crossed the line, you hear me? 
I agree with you there, she's gone too far with this letter. But remember, she's your wife and the daughter of a noble. You know exactly what will happen if you lose control of yourself and do something to her. It's not going to look good for you. She, she may be nobility, but I, I have the Koska. We have our own way of taking care of these kinds of problems. Still, as plain as day is, it'll only a, make a bigger mess. No one else knows about this yet. Are you telling me to act like nothing's happened? Happening? When she so blatantly disrespects me? Jacopo, could you let me take care of it? I'm friends with the madam, you know that. She'll listen to me. So I'll make sure it gets through to her, just how much you care about her. I couldn't ask you, it would be disgraceful. That's nothing to be ashamed of. What did I tell you? I'm on your side and you're on mine. We're in this to get... What well, You can ask me things you couldn't ask others to do. I have tight lips. Look, anything you... Yeah, tight lips, my arse. Fucking making up shit. Loose lips, more like. Anything you ask, I'll keep absolutely under wraps. Damn it. You're right. Yes, you're right. I'm well aware that I always lose myself in her presence. If I try talking to her now, I'll probably will do something rash. Yes. I'll probably... I'll make sure everything works out, got it? You and the madam can go back to the way things used to be, so you don't have to suffer anymore. I'll take care of it. I'm the only one who understands your pain. And I'm the only one who can help you out of it. Maria. Oh, don't make that face, Jacopino. Mm. Thank you, Maria. Please, let her know that even if she is seeing other men, and even if she does silently mock me for not being of noble blood, that I, that I still love her. That I don't want to raise my hand against her. You love her? That's a riot. You're too busy chasing your stacks of paper. You don't have what it takes to truly love a woman. I will say though, surprised you lost your head that badly. Quite the little crush you've got on her. You could just sit down and talk to her like a rational human being, and presto, all your problems would be solved. But you can't even manage that, which is why you're in this predicament. Once you're convinced of something, Jacopo, you never let go of it. And she's too timid to speak up for herself. Sorry, madam. I got nothing against you. I just didn't expect things to go quite this well. There's no stopping now. Not when I've got this much momentum. Also, watching a pretty girl like you break down gives me goosebumps. What the fuck? What is she? Fucking psychopath. You're still convinced I'm the only person you can trust? How, how did you react to the letter? Well, uh, yeah, about that. Would he not take it? Oh no, he took it. It's just, um... Don't feel too bad about this, madam. He said he's too busy with work. And tossed the letter aside. I told him to make sure he writes you a reply, but he hasn't gotten round to it at all. I... I see. That's... a shame. It kills me to see you like this, madam. I don't get why he has to be so heartless. Not even taking a little bit of time out of his day to read the letter you poured your soul into writing. It's unacceptable. I'm, sh I'm sure he really is busy. He did not throw it away though, did he? I imagine he means to read it when he has more time. Madam, after everything he's done to you, you still think he means well? I have faith. My, uh, my timing was poor, that's all. One second, I'm just going to... Config... Um... My timing was poor, that's all. I believe in him. I believe that the day will come when he gives me his attention again as he did before. Madam. So... Could I ask you to believe with me, Maria? To have faith that you will once more show me his love, and that mine will reach him. Something tells me that it will all work out if you pray for it. 
Yeah, okay. If you're fine with me praying, I'll pray. I'll get down on my knees for you, madam. I'll have faith. Thank you. I would like to write another letter. When it is complete, could I ask you to deliver it to him? I'll give him as many as you want. As many as it takes for you to get through to him. You really ought to learn not to be trusting, madam. Take a real close look. And you'll see exactly who it was that ground your happy little life into dust. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> I am the reincarnation of the mother of gods. <laughs> oh, fuck, I can't do that. <laughs> oh god, I can't hold back the laughter. This is a stage of my own creation. We didn't have enough actors, so the playwright had to take on a role herself. But that only adds to the excitement. Yes, this is all, all, all my masterpiece. You're just ignorant puppets dancing to my tune. From the first shot to the last, blind to whose fingers sitting on the trigger. What is your... Why are you doing this, Mario? Listen to me, Jacopo, and try to keep your head. I saw the madam. Meeting with another man behind your back. You know the arch in the rose garden? The far side's out of sight from the mansion, making a perfect place to hide. I saw her back there. From the looks of it, the madam's having her meetings with one of the men who comes to your business gatherings. And they don't act like they're just friends. Ah, uh, but just to be clear, I don't have any solid proof. So it'd be best if you didn't mention this to her yet. You wouldn't want to start throwing around accusations, only to find out too late it was all a big misunderstanding. I'll get to the bottom of it, so you... I think the madam may have had her eyes on several men. Being a woman, you know, I can tell these things. She's given these suggestive looks, but to whom, I can't pinpoint. A lot of people come in and out of this house after all. What? You want to keep her from leaving her room? Hmm, that might be for the best. With so much going so well, it makes me think even God's on my side. They could just talk it over with one another. But they won't, and they're in deeper and deeper shit for it. You're the only one I can trust, Maria. And the timing that night, my God, it was perfect. Hey, Jacopo. I could just be misreading her, but something seems off about the madam. Like, she's been on edge or something. I tried to egg her into revealing what's going on, and she let slip that she might be going out somewhere tonight. She's not going with you, is she? You were going out to Serbia construction site today, right? Then I'll just suggest you get that taken care of quickly. A, a dance? At this time of night? Yep, and since it's so late, no loud music. All you get is a little whistling courtesy of me. But this room is too small for it. We'll use the Great Hall. Wouldn't that put us in everyone else's way? He would probably complain about the noise too. No need to worry. Jack was out inspecting some factory or something today. After that, he's got a meeting, so he'll be staying the night elsewhere. Oh, she set this all up. Oh, and she had been saying that she was seeing another guy under the arches in the Rose Garden. It all makes sense. What a backstabbing, conniving little shit she is. <clears throat> I thought you would not be back until tomorrow. And how would you know that? No, forget that. Does my staying the night elsewhere have any effect on you? You were just waiting for this opportunity, weren't you? This is where all of this came from. No, what would I possibly want you... What, what what would I possibly want you out of the house for? I'm sure you know better than anyone. What? What, what is that smell? Perfume? When did you get perfume? And I have to say, you seem to be having quite the time. Look at you. You're out of breath, red as a beat. I made the right decision coming back. Where the hell were you going? I'm... I'm sorry, this is all my fault. If I hadn't asked you to dance, and me bringing the perfume only made things worse. No, 
You did not feel bad about anything, Mario. Everything you did was with my best interests at heart. She doesn't even suspect me in the slightest. Ah, and I was able, and I was able to put that perfume to great use. That money-sucking leech Tomaso showed up at the perfect time too. I'm pretty sure that when Jacopo started getting, that's when Jacopo started getting actively violent. A jealous man is a wonderful thing. Always imagining the worst and making matters worse for it. Wow, was that you, Tomaso? It's been so long. What brings you here? Oh, look at who, at who it is, little Miss Campanella. There's a surprise. Didn't expect to see you this side of the great blue. Oh, you know, I've been giving Jacopo a hand. Ah, well, call me impressed. After what happened, I would have thought you wouldn't want nothing to do with him. That was between our parents. Jacopo didn't have anything to do with it. Well, it sure would be nice for all you younger generation to go through life without nothing to spark that kind of powder keg. Now that it's my place to talk. No need to worry yourself about any of that. So, what brings you here, Tomaso? I'm a little, uh, you know how it is. Having a bit of trouble staying afloat. Ah, I see. So you're here to beg for offerings. Pretty shameless, Tomaso. No point in having shame if it ain't making money. Toss that out with the sham chamber pot. Well, might make things easier if I just quit being human altogether. Are you hard for cash? Unfortunately. Numbers were supposed to go up, but for some reason they ended up going down instead. Haha, <laughs> might be best if you kick the gambling habit. No, no. That's like telling me to go off myself. Ha, huh, I bet. So, say, Tomaso. Maybe I could pinch in a bit too. Oh, you mean it? That'd be a huge help. <laughs> There's seriously not a scrap of shame in you. However, in exchange, I'd like you to do something for me. Someone whose face needs a visit from my fists? Depending on the number, I could also possibly cut them into chunks and toss them into the ocean. Whoa, whoa, keep it clean. I'm not asking you to do anything like that. What is it then? Something a low life like me can do? It will be easy. And it's nothing bad either. You're going to go talk to Jacopo, aren't you? Well, there's something I'd like you to tell him while you're at it. You know he's married, right? You get pretty nasty with his wife, though. That's so. Sounds like she's got it rough. She does, and she's religiously devoted to him, too. I've been trying to nudge things in the right direction to get her back on good terms with him, but... I haven't had much luck. Ain't that something the two of them should work through? Normally, yes, but it's reached the point where I can't bear to sit back and watch anymore. I don't like seeing the two of them in pain. I want to do something for them. How noble. You're pretty devoted yourself, little lady. <laughs> I'm not important. I'm not... I'm not important right now. Just doing the right thing. But the thing is, Jacobo won't hear a word of it. I figured maybe you, being a man, might be able to get through to him a little better than me. Hmm. Doubt you'll listen to me either, to be honest. Come on, you used to be really close though. And I doubt he hates you. Uh, uh, well, and I doubt he hates hates you. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Anywho, talking so talk something anyone could do. So what do you want me to tell him? I need you to give him a bit of a scolding. Tell him the madam came to you asking for advice and that she accidentally let slip that the way he treats her day to day causes her grief. Oh, of course it was her. I've never met this wife of his before though, you know. It works even better that way. She's so downtrodden she can't talk to anyone about it. And she thought that maybe you, being family, might be able to help. She's never met you, but she's still latched onto the ray of hope. I'm sure when Jack will finds out she brought it up with family, he'll know he can't keep mistreating her. Things like this, they hit home harder when they come from someone on the outside. You make a decent point. Just remember, little lady, all I can do is bring it up with him. Can't guarantee it'll change none. That's all I need you to do. Thanks a bunch, Thomaso. Alright, one more thing. Hmm? 
This is some perfume that's grown quite popular recently. Ask him to give it to the madam as a gift. If you won't take it, you keep it. Give it to another woman. Sell it, whatever you want. Perfume, eh? Very thoughtful of you. Women do like getting gifts like that. Yes, we do. If Big Bad Jacko gives her some of that, there'll be love for us again before you know it. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Never thought the day'd come when I got to play Cupid. Now I'm starting to get kinda excited about this. Stay focused, Thomas Owen, and thanks. Also, you didn't hear any of this from me. I'm fine just pulling the strings from the shadows. What a cunning little fucking shit. Their relationship's in complete shambles, and Jack will still insist he's fucking he fucking loves her. And the madam says she still believes in him. <laughs> Seriously, how stupid can you be? Poor Jacopo. Poor, poor madame. Now then, let's see where this boulder rolls to next. And how far it keeps rolling. Naturally, I'll be nudging it along its way. Because after all... A play lives or dies by the director's hands. Oh, Maria, you suck ass. Jeez. Well, that was, um... That was definitely something. I think I'm going to save it at this point. Let's save it here. Yes. Switch to the avatar screen. Ah, yes. Well, that was something. It turns out that Maria has been fucking stirring the shit from behind um, the curtains the whole time. Fuck. Makes sense. I wonder why he lost his shit all of a sudden just seeing her dance with the maid and then made random assumptions that she was like going out with to see other men or something. It was like fucking left from left field. So, well, I mean, things are pr definitely going to get more and more interesting. Man, the girl with the white hair just seems to get absolutely screwed in every life. I don't know if she, like, pissed off, like, some uber witch or something that's cursed her for eternity. By the way, stuff is getting spicy. Um, But yes, this is the house in Fata Morgana. Um, and that was caught in a quagmire. But for now... We'll leave it here. I'm Ash Mannix. This was the house in Fata Morgana, and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye bye.